Hello, hello, hello. This is Michael Height, the Ministry Geek, with another Logos 8 tip. This week, I want to talk a little bit about shortcuts. Uh, Logos is a difficult program sometimes. There's lots of tools. There's lots of guides. There's, it, it, there's just lots to access, and it can be hard to find what you're looking for in all the menus and that kind of thing, and there's lots of ways to, to navigate around. You can use keyboard shortcuts. We're not going to talk about keyboard shortcuts today. Uh, but one of the, the major features that provides access to so much is called the command box. It's in this upper menu bar on the left-hand side. The magnifying glass has been moved to the beginning of the command box. And you can simply type things into that command box to launch them or to find them. For example, you can do something as basic as opening a Bible translation simply by typing the abbreviation for the t translation. If I click in the command box and type NASB, you'll notice that I can open a variety of resources. One is the New American Standard Bible. And if I click on that, it opens my New American Standard Bible. If I wanted to open the ESV, I can just type ESV. You'll see that I have a few choices. I have my ESV Study Bible or just the uh, ESV version. If I click on Open ESV, there it is. So instead of going to the library and trying to find the ESV or the New American Standard or the New King James, you can simply type the abbreviation into the command box and it will open it for you. You can do this with any kind of resource. For example, if I wanted to open the lexicon BDAG, uh, which is the abbreviated form for a Greek English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature, uh, I can just type the term BDAG into the command box and notice it finds that resource. Click on it and it opens BDAG for me. I can do that with just about any kind of dictionary or lexicon. If I wanted to open Halot, uh, the Hebrew lexicon, I can type Halot. And here is the Hebrew Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament, and I can open it as well. So the advantage of the command box is that you just have to type an abbreviation. These abbreviations can uh, access any of the resources, or at least many of the resources. For example, I use the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church quite a bit. Well, there's a couple of ways I can do it. I could type the word Oxford because I know that's part of the title and you'll notice that it finds it. It's going to open the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. I can also just type in the phrase ODCC. Now if I type in ODCC, I get the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. Well, how did it know that ODCC was the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church? If I look in one of my resource panels, and if I go up to the panel resource menu, and I pull up the information about that resource, you'll notice that I have a short title here. I can actually edit it. I can make this anything I want. For example, I could change Oxford Dictionary, and I could type the word Ralph. Okay, so I'm going to call Oxford Dictionary Ralph. And if I close this, I can now go up and I can type the word Ralph and it's going to know that Ralph is the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church and I can open it. I'm not going to leave that that way. I'm going to go back to the information panel and I'm going to change that before I forget. But I, whatever that short abbreviation is, you can assign that to a resource and then you just type that into the command box and it makes it very easy to open it. You can type in encyclopedia names, ISBE, and it's going to tell me that I have two versions of ISBE available. I'm going to open up the revised ISBE and now I have access to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. So just know that by typing into the command box, you can open any kind of a book or resource. But in addition to that, you can open just about any of your tools. For example, I'm always looking for my favorites panel or my highlighters panel. I can do the same thing if I just type the word favorites into the command box. It'll open my favorites panel for me. 
I'm going to go ahead and close that for just a second. If I want to open my highlighters, I can just start to type the word highlighter. Notice I just got the word high in, but it's going to search for all the resources that have the word high or highest or highlight. And it's going to allow me to open that particular panel and I click on it and there is access to all my highlighters. So any of those kinds of tools that are available in logos that you need quick access to. Another one that I use quite a lot is copy Bible verses. Well, I forget in my tool menu where copy Bible verses is. It's here under passages, but I, I don't always remember that. So all I've got to do is go to the command box and type the word copy. And notice it finds a tool called Copy Bible Verses. And when I click on it, I have opened Copy Bible Verses. So the command box is really a, a power user way of accessing these various tools and resources that you have available to you. But it goes beyond that. You can actually start to do a particular study of something, a, a particular topic. If you type the word study, and then type in a topic. I'm going to type in the word faith. I'm going to want to study faith, for example. And notice down here under layouts, you have open topic study layout to faith. So if I click on that, it goes ahead and opens a predefined layout for me that's designed to study topics. It opens my Bible. It opens my preferred Bible. It opens a number of resources and dictionaries. Uh, these are all prioritized. In this case, the Lexham Theological Word Book, the ISBE, the New Bible Dictionary, and so on. And they're all open to an article on the topic that I searched, in this case, faith. So I've, I'm already connected to all these articles on faith. And then it opens a topic guide to faith where I can access all of these resources related to the topic faith. It starts a sermon starter guide on faith, and it'll even do a Bible word study guide on the English word faith and show me all of the different he Greek and Hebrew words that are translated faith in the, the Bible and, and it lets me do a very in-depth study of the word faith just by typing study faith into the command box. Now I'm going to go ahead and close all of these panels and they've provided a built-in shortcut to do that now. Up in the upper right hand corner of the, the menu bar you have this little icon and it, this icon is close all. We used to have, be able to just type that into the command box but now they've given us an icon to do it. If I click this close all icon it closes all my panels, gets me back to a plain blank uh, window uh, that I can work from. Now the other neat thing that you can do in the command box is you can study original language words and you don't have to know how to type Greek and Hebrew to do that. For example, if I wanted to study the Greek word uh, love, agape, I can type lowercase g in a colon. I'm telling it I'm going to give it a Greek word and I'm going to type in a colon and then just transliterate the word agape, A-G-A-P-E. And what Logos does is it says, okay, do you want a Bible word study to the word agape, agapetos, uh, or do you want to look up these words? Now, if I look up agape, it's going to go ahead and open it in my preferred lexicon, which is BDAG. So you'll notice it opened it up to the, the study, the uh, entry in BDAG on uh, agape. But it also can allow me to do a, a more in-depth study. If I, if I repeat my search here, oh, if I could spell it, A-G-A-P-E. Notice I can do a Bible word study. And again, I'm back to a, a Bible word study, this time from the Greek word agape. And I can look at how it's translated. Uh, I can look at how the translation ring works. I can look at where the word occurs. I've got all this information about the Greek word agape just by typing the word into the command box. I can do the same thing with Hebrew if I just type lowercase h and a colon and then transliterate the word. For example, if I wanted to look at Jehovah or Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, for example, I can do a Bible word study on Yahweh. I can look up Yahweh in a lexicon. So it opens my theological word book, uh, my Hebrew lexicon on Yahweh. I can go back. 
YHWH. And I can do a Bible word study on the Hebrew word Yahweh. So a lot of power available to you just from the command box. Just by typing into the command box, you can get to all of this information and all of these resources. Another shortcut that's available to you, and some people have asked uh, seeing my videos online, is this shortcut to area right at the top of the menu bar, right off of uh, this little separator bar at the end of tools. You'll see that you have a blank area. That blank area allows you to drag panels into that area to create shortcuts to get to them. I have a number of them here. This first one is notes, for example. And if I click on this, it opens my notes panel. I don't have to go find it in my tools or my guides or my documents. I don't remember where I put it or where they put it, more likely. Uh, and so all I have to do is drag it into that shortcuts area. For example, I have one that's for my show favorites, like I was doing in the command box. But now all I have to do is click on this uh, icon that I have now in my shortcuts area, and I have access to all of my favorites. I can do my highlighters and I have access with one click to anything that I put here. These two colored icons are actually translations. One of them is my New American Standard. The other one is my Greek uh, interlinear that I use quite a lot. Uh, and so all you have to do is, for example, if I, if I mentioned earlier that I use the Oxford Dictionary a lot, I want to look at the Oxford Dictionary. So I type in ODCC and I open it. But I find that I go to the Oxford Dictionary all the time. Well, all I have to do is grab this the panel uh, tab at the top of the panel and drag it up and let go of it. And you'll notice it puts a new icon into that shortcuts area, which is to this Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. Now, if I close that panel, that icon stays there. And anytime I want to open the Oxford Dictionary, all I have to do is go up and click that icon and it opens that icon for me. It opens that resource for me. I have a lot of choices on, on the way these shortcuts look and, and how they they appear on the screen. For example, if I right click on the Oxford Dictionary icon, I can show a label. You'll notice it's going to call it ODCC for short. If I wanted to, I could change that to Ralph going like I did before. And that is there. I can turn the image off so that I just have the word Ralph. And now if I go up, I can click on Ralph and it opens the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. I can go back and turn uh, the image back on and I can show all of these different icons. For example, I'm going to use just this colored heart because I like the Oxford Dictionary. I'm going to turn off the label and now I can customize what's up there. Now, I usually recommend that as you first get started with these, that you do put some kind of a label up there so that you know what you're looking at. But as you start to run low on space, you can change it just to the label or you can change it just to the icon. And now all of those uh, resources and guides are available to you just uh, quickly at the top of your menu bar. Now, the nice part about this is that some of the, the tools and features in Logos are buried pretty deep into menus. For example, program settings is one of those things I'm always looking at changing little tweaking program settings. And I never remember where it is. I know it's under the tools menu, but if I go to tools and I start to scroll down, you'll notice it's going to be all the way down here under utilities program settings. Well, again, that's sometimes, you know, where is it? I don't remember. If I click on program settings, I can now uh, drag the tab from program settings into this menu bar. I can close program settings and now whenever I need it, if I want to get to program settings, I just click on it and it opens. So you have lots of choices from the guides menu. Uh, for example, if you like the passage guide or the theological guide, which is a relatively new guide in Logos, you can just grab the theological guide, you can put it in the shortcuts bar, and now whenever you need the theological guide, you just click on that icon, it opens the theological guide for you, you type in the word faith, and you can do a theological study from your um, theological guide on the concept of faith. So 
using the command box, using the shortcuts area uh, next to the menu bar, uh, really allows you to customize the interface, give you access to those tools and guides that you need without necessarily looking through all the menus and trying to find them. Now, there's one more kind of shortcut that I wanted to share with you today, and that has to do with these menus that are built in. You have uh, guides and you have tools, uh, especially. And one of the things that they changed in the most recent version of Logos is that they now give you all of these lists of guides and tools. And you'll notice that there's an area at the top where you have shortcuts to these various guides and tools. For example, if I, if I want access to the workflow editor, if I right click on it, notice it says pin to top and that's checked. Well, if I go back to the top, you'll see that the workflow editor is actually at the top of the menu, and that's how it got there. If I want to get rid of it now from the top of the menu, all I have to do is go down to, see, I can never remember where they are. Workflow editor, right click on it, uncheck, pin to top, and you'll see that it's gone. And so I can actually customize the tops of these tool menus, this guides menu, with just the tools and guides that I use most frequently. Now, one frustration is you cannot rearrange them once they're up here. Once you pin them to the top, you can't move them around. If you want them in a particular sequence, if you want them in a particular order, you're going to have to unpin them all and then pin them in the order that you want them. I'm hopeful that they're going to change that in the future uh, and make it a little bit easier for us to, to navigate and, and arrange those. But for right now, just know that if you pin them to the top, they're going to be up there in the order that you pinned them and you really don't have any access other than that. Now, but the advantage is that some of the guides that are uh, a little bit further down in the, these menus, for example, the Bible Reference Guides has tons of these guides. One of them uh, is that I like is a words guide called Root. I, I like to study. Well, you saw how far down these menus it is. Well, I can go ahead and pin it to the top, and I can click on it. And if I want to do a Root study on the word Agape, oop. again, if I could type, it would be easier. I can do a root study on agape, and it shows me all the lemmas on agape. If I know that I want to get access to this guide more frequently, I can simply drag it to my shortcuts area. I can change the icon to something. We're going to give it a flag. We're going to show the label root. And now whenever I need to get to that guide, instead of trying to go to tools or guides and scroll all the way down trying to find it or see if I remembered to pin it in my guide, now I just click here and root opens and I have access to it. So utilize the command box, utilize the shortcuts area, utilize pin to top to customize these guides and tool menus, and you're gonna find access to the information and the resources much easier, a lot quicker, and you can customize Logos the way you want it. We'll see you next time with another tip on how to use Logos 8.